Area of the trapezium. Area of the trapezium. Um, here are four pictures, uh, four shapes. These are all uh, different kinds of trapezia. Um, what is it about a trapezium that makes it a trapezium? Well, first of all, all trapezia have four sides. Does that mean that all four-sided shapes are trapezia? No, because you can have squares and rectangles and parallelograms and rhombuses and kites and um, anything else. That's about it, isn't it? Um, and other kinds of tra uh, quadrilaterals. Um, so so um, a trapezium has four sides, but what else um, does it have that sets it apart from those other quadrilaterals we talked about? Well, specifically, a trapezium has this. It has one pair and only one pair of parallel lines. There's a pair of parallel lines on our largest shape. Uh, below that, there's a pair of parallel lines there, indicated in maths with arrows, like so. Um, top right, here's a trapezium. One pair of parallel lines. Of course, the parallel lines don't have to be horizontal. Here's a pair of vertical parallel lines, but they are parallel nonetheless, aren't they? Um, so a trapezium is a quadrilateral that has one pair and only one pair of parallel sides. If it had two pairs of parallel sides, it would be a square, wouldn't it? Or a rectangle, or a parallelogram, or a rhombus. So a trapezium, one pair of parallel sides. Sometimes, like here, and like here, trapezia can also have two right angles. They can't have one right angle, or three, or four, it's not possible. But sometimes trapezia have um, a couple of right angles, as in those two examples on the right, the two examples on the left don't have um, don't have any right angles. Uh, they all have one pair of parallel lines, sometimes a couple of right angles, and you can have such a thing as an isosceles trapezium as well. The large shape is an isosceles trapezium um, because it has two equal sides there and there. The parallel sides can't be equal. If the parallel sides were equal, that would make a um, rectangle or a square. I'm actually going to come on to that in a minute. Um, but it can have two pairs, it can have one pair of parallel sides and the two sides that are not parallel. So there we go, a trapezium. Four sides, one pair of parallel sides, um, and sometimes two right angles, uh, and also sometimes it's possible to have a nice lot of these ones have two equal sides. Uh, now then, let's talk about how to find the area of a trapezium. That's not the one I want. Where's the one I want? Where's he gone? There it is. There's a trapezium. I know it's a trapezium because I said so. There's a pair of parallel sides. And actually this one is, well, it's not quite a fossil Um, well, let's say it actually. We just wasted it. <laughs> let's just move that slightly that way. That's a bit better, isn't it? There we go. Um, world class drawing. Okay, so there we go. One isosceles trapezium. Um, let's fiddle around with this um, trapezium. Um, let's just explore something. H how long are the parallel sides? Well, the um, lower of the two is four squares long, and the upper line is two squares long. I'm actually going to um, extend one of those lines out and shorten the other one to make them equal. Um, what's four plus two? Four plus two is six. If I halve that, I give myself three. What I've done there is I've found the average of the um, two parallel sides. The average length here of the parallel sides is three squares. So I'm just going to draw two three square long sides, like so, and like so. The same distance apart as the ones are on the right, in other words, two squares apart. Okay. There, there. there we go. So instead of having a two centimeter, a two square and a four square line, I've got two three square lines. Uh, I've averaged out the two parallel sides. They're still parallel, aren't they? And they're still two squares apart as the ones on the right side. So let's join them up now with those two sides that we've always had there. Let's make them like so. Oops. Okay, I really need to draw Let's get rid of you and let's move you in there. So if I join those two sides together like that, then I've actually now, instead of trapezium, I've now got a rectangle. And it's a rectangle that is 3 by 2. So it's the same height, because of course over here the height of this trapezium is 2 squares. Um, so my rectangle has the same height as the trapezium, and the length of the rectangle, the long side of the rectangle, 
are equal to the average length of the two parallel sides of the trapezium. And of course, you can find the area of a rectangle very easily, can't you? That being the length and the breadth, which is in this case 3 times 2, which is 6 squares. Um, in short, that's how you find the area of a, of a, of a trapezium. You find the average length of the two parallel sides and you multiply that average length by the height of the trapezium. Um, so there's a formula and what we do to create our formula <laughs> what we do to create our formula I'll get boring soon and I'll stop doing it. What we do to create our formula is we actually give a name to the parallel sides rather than a number we call them A and B. Okay, so let's call those two sides A and B. If we find the average of A and B, which we can do by adding them together and halving it, so we'll say A plus B divided by 2. If we find the average length of those two parallel sides and multiply it by the perpendicular height, which of course you'd need to show like that, um, if we can find the average of those two parallel sides and multiply it by the perpendicular height, that will tell us the area of our shape. And therefore, that's the formula um, that we use. So let's just work an example through just so that you can see it in practice. Let's say um, it has a side here of 7, and let's make it a little bit of and a side here of 12, and let's say the height is 6 squared. Let's, let's do it in uh, meters, shall we, to give it a unit of measurement going up. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be the sum of the two parallel sides, which is 7 plus 12. We'll divide that by 2, and then we'll times that by 6, which is the height. Okay, 7 out of 12 is 19. So we're going to do 19 over 2 times by 6. Uh, 19 divided by 2, well, half of 19 is 9.5, we have 9.5 times 6, and that's why they did make the calculation a little bit more interesting for you. Um, because we're all big boys now, aren't we? Um, 9.5 times 6. How, how would you choose to do 9.5 times 6? You could do 9 times 6 and 0.5 times 6. Um, I'm going to do a written method. Tell you what, let's do a written method and a, and a mental method. We'll do 9.5 times 6. So I'm going to multiply yeah, 9.5. I'm going to turn, turn, call it a whole number. I'll call it 95. 6, and we'll multiply that together, and we'll adjust our answer. 5 times 6 is 30, 33, 9 times 6 is 54, plus 3 makes 57. That gives us an answer of 570, but it's not 95 times 6, it's 9.5 times 6. We have one decimal place in our question. Um, if you've been in my class, you've been taught um, that if you have one decimal place in the question when you multiply decimal, there'll be one decimal place in your answer. So if we prepare our answer here and we take this solution here, 570, this product, pop it in like there, then you can see that gives us uh, an area of 57.0, which I'm going to be very happy about, 7 meters squared. Um, does that work if we do 9 times 6? Let's partition the number 9 times 6 and 0 0.5 times 6. 9 times 6, 9 and 6 is 54, right? 0.5 times 6, well, 0.5 is a half, isn't it? What's half of 6? Half of 6 is 3. Well done. So, of course, you get the same answer because we did it right the both we did it right both ways. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing it. You might have had your own method, possibly. You might have done 9 sixes and 10 sixes and uh, found the average of your answer, I suppose. Um, there we go. That's how you find the area of a parallelogram. There's the um, formula that you need, okay? You find the average of the two parallel sides by adding them together and halving them and times that average by the perpendicular height and that tells you the area of your trapezium.